Hey everyone, in one of my last videos I tried out the motion tracking of Quick Magic on different types of videos from the internet and see how they perform. This time I filmed myself and created a short animation in Unreal Engine 5 to see if it can also be used for production. That being said, let's start with how I achieved my short animation. I started with brainstorming some idea for the short animation and had most of the scenes planned in my head. With no knowledge on actually how to film myself properly to do a motion tracking video, I just started out acting the different scenes I had in my head. I'm sorry for the cringe videos, but we have to get through this together. I always started in a T-pose because I know for programs this is one of the simplest position to recognize. But besides of that, I didn't really consider any like angles or different perspectives, I just recorded myself front face to the camera. After the videos were done, I could simply drag and drop the videos into Quick Magic and select the Unreal Engine 5.6 rig in my case, because I wanted to use it for Unreal Engine. With that ready, you can choose exactly what you want to track. If you just want to track the body, if you want to track the hands, you can even track the face um, motion. In my case, I left everything how it is, so I tracked my body, my hands, and I chose just the version 1 for the first video to test if it actually works. I know, I know, this will sound so fake, but I'm really generally so impressed always with the results of just a single video turning it into a motion track. Um, Quick Magic does it, in my opinion, the best. With just the basic settings, I got a fluid movement, not too much sliding on the floor, not so much clipping, and even the movements of the hand, which is so crazy that it can actually track and replicate this. So for the test animation or the test motion tracking, this was amazing. I also wanted to try out the version 2 to see how it compares. Uh, they just launched the beta version 2. And depending on where you place the slider, you can get more enhanced accurate motion or overall stability. I don't know really what it means, so I tested it out with one times the slider all the way to 10x and one time with all the way to 5x. And to be honest, I didn't really feel that much of a difference, maybe also because my video is not particularly good for the version 2 because I can imagine jumping or moving fast around could be, could be a problem for the version 1 where the version 2 is better but in my case for the rest of the video I always stick to the version 1 which is a really solid base. The two scenes where I just walked around like I'm really hurt or uh, where I just turned around in a circle worked really good um, what didn't really work was elevation. I wanted to create a scene where I walk upstairs and stepped onto my couch for that matter. But the program didn't really pick this up. Uh, it got the motion perfectly fine, but it didn't got the elevation. In my case it was no problem because I can just keyframe this uh, elevation after that in uh, Blender or in Unreal Engine 5. So for me it's fine, maybe they will update this also in the future so you have a more accurate aligning there. In one scene I fell on my knee and placed my hands on the floor and it was all like in front of the camera so the camera couldn't really recognize where my feet are, where my torso is, whatsoever. So no wonder the program didn't pick this up. Which is all fine because as I said in the beginning I didn't really pay attention to how I filmed this. So uh, the next day I filmed these two scenes again. This time I only went down on one knee and I slightly rotated myself. So I was sideways to the camera. So the camera can always see where my two legs are and also where my hands are placed. And again, this worked way better than the first videos. Now the part started where I was most afraid of. Uh, I opened up Unreal Engine and it was ready to retarget the animation onto my night model I uh, found on the Fab Marketplace, so it's not for me. And I know retargeting can be a pain in the ass if programs don't have the perfect tools for it, but luckily, really luckily, I found a solution. I think since Unreal Engine 5.4, they have this quick retargeting tool where you can just simply right click on the animation sequence of your character go to retarget and then in the output select the new character, in my case it was the knight and then just press 
the animation you want to retarget and you can see the animation in real time. That you can simply export and you can drag and drop this animation into your scene like it's nothing. And I was so amazed because this can take so much hours just to retarget one animation to another character. But damn, that was so fast and it was nearly perfect. I had only one problem in my hurt walking animation, the hand somehow got crumbled up. It looked really weird uh, after the retargeting. It looked perfectly fine from the quick magic uh, export, but when I retargeted it in uh, Unreal Engine, it looked so weird. And I tried really, I tried everything. I tried it with different versions of Unreal Engine because I saw it's the wrong version maybe. I imported it into Blender and exported it with different file types, but nothing really worked. Always when I press retarget, the hand got crumbled. I was so close to giving up because uh, I tried this for several hours and it didn't work. But then I thought to myself, let's just try to motion track this in Quick Magic with another rig. So I selected the Mixmo version 2 rig. Uh, there, to my surprise, you can also select like no clipping, meaning that it will check like if a hand is clipping through the body, which is also a plus for me. So I selected this, exported it, the motion tracking was great again. Um, drop this into Unreal Engine and then again I was hoping that I can simply do this retargeting um, like with the Unreal Engine rig and for whatever reason it works perfectly fine and it worked even better with the Mixamo rig in Unreal Engine and the retargeting didn't mess up the hand this time so uh, I was really happy with that and later then I also took most of the videos and motion tracked them again in Quick Magic with the Mixamo version 2 rig because it was just smoother and it looked cleaner, so that's a plus. After that it was time to set up the environment and the animations. I also found the environment on Fab Marketplace, so I don't take credit for this. I even found a funny trick to simulate dead bodies into the scene. You can simply take the physics asset of your character and put it somewhere into your scene. Then press the simulate button and the body will crumble and collapse to the floor like a dead body. And then it stays that position. You can simply press K and there you can type in a name to save that file. And then if you close the simulation, the body will stay in that exact position. And that's what I did for like 20 bodies or so. I just placed random characters in there, let them flop to the ground, save the position and yeah, it looked nice. I also found on Megascan some blood splatter decals. I just simply drag and drop them onto the scene so it looks a little bit more realistic, like there was an actual fight and uh, some blood on the floor and on the snow. Then with the walking animation everything worked perfectly fine. Uh, when it came to the stair walking animation, as I said in the beginning, I simply manually keyframed the elevation of the stair walking and because the shot was actually from a bird's eye view, so from the top, you can't really recognize the perfect alignment of the foot onto the step. So that was, was not so big of a problem um, and it looked, it looked realistic, it looked believable from the top. The last challenge was that the character takes a sword in his hands and stabs himself in the heart. Now I usually do animations and stuff like this in Blender, so my first intention was I go into Blender, I just do a child off on the sword and put it in his hand and then track it onto his hand, save these as a keyframes and plug it back into Unreal Engine, that's what I did. But it only worked for the Mixamo character. When I retargeted the, to the knight model, the hand movement and the sword didn't align up perfectly. I think this is the retarget problem or a retarget thing of Unreal Engine and I knew this was not the perfect solution. So actually after thinking a bit I was like, well Unreal Engine is a game engine. They for sure have an option to put a sword in a hand of a character. That's probably one of the most done action in the program anyways. So yeah, of course there was an option like this. It's even, you can even do it in a sequencer. You can just drag and drop the character and the sword in the sequencer select the sword and say attach it to the hand and it does exactly that and boom now it followed the hand movement of the knight perfectly and i was happy then after a few more hours with playing around with the camera movement and the scene overall i was done i could render it out 
But then I had to do the sound design and uh, oh god, I hate the sound design. I can't even tell you why. Um, it adds so much to a scene, but for me it's just it's so exhausting to add sound. And yeah, you already saw the final result in the beginning. Uh, I know for sure this isn't production ready, but I was able to create a whole scene, a whole short animation, a whole idea with simply recording myself doing random shit at home, motion track it with quick magic, simple and easy, put it into Unreal Engine and boom, I had a scene ready. And to be honest for me, this is a really good use for AI in the 3D world. So not everything gets replaced, just like some ideas, some mockups. Um, gets easier to do and faster in production. And keep in mind, I took the raw motion tracking data of Quick Magic. I didn't do any cleanup. I think if you just spend like one or two hours on the cleanup animation in Blender or let's say in uh, Cascadeur is also really great, uh, the animation could look actually close to perfect. So there is nothing holding us up. If you want to try out Quick Magic for yourself, just click the link in the description and sign up to get 50 credits a thing for free, so you can upload a few videos and track them for yourself and see how it works for you. And of course, it would mean a lot to me if you use the link in the description, because then if you later decide to buy some more credits, I would get a little, little bit of the earnings. And with this, I can keep making free tutorials on YouTube for you and some more videos. I hope this video sparked some motivation for you to create your own animation and if not, I still hope you liked the video and enjoyed watching it.